most single women who want a relationship are either consciously or unconsciously seeking a high value man. And let's face it, because this isn't your average guy, they tend to have a surplus of options and specific wants and needs that many women misunderstand. So today, I wanna to have an honest conversation with you to share the truth behind what high value men are seeking in marriage. So armed with this knowledge, you have an easier time attracting the guy you want. Now, before I can talk about what high value men are seeking in marriage and in relationships with women, I need to come to a standard definition of what a high value man is culturally accepted as in society. This is not my definition, but after having thousands of conversations with women in every continent, every walk of life, all kinds of challenges that you can think of, I can honestly share that this is standard definition of what women consider a high value man. The first one, Let's start with the elephant in the room is economic stability. In this day and age, women are seeking, even if you're a high achiever and make your own money, you're looking for a guy who is, at the very minimum, economically stable. Second thing is ambition and purpose. A guy who wants more, I want a guy who wants to better himself, a guy who's here and not just willing to take what he's given, but he wants to expand and create more and get more is typically considered more high value. And same thing with purpose. A guy who has a North Star, something he's going for that is not just randomly tumbling around without a sense of purpose. Next one is physical health. All things being equal, you have two guys who are intelligent and wealthy. The guy who is physically stronger and healthier is higher value in society standards. The next one is reliability and maturity. A guy who is consistent a guy who's acting his age, and a guy who is reliable. He says one thing and he ends up doing it. The next two are intelligence and emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence being something that as society progresses, we value more and more. Because if you take a look at what maybe your grandma's age considered a high value man, he's a lawyer and he provides for his family. He was considered a high value man. Now you're looking for someone, rightly so, who can connect with you emotionally can understand you, who can open his heart to you, who is interested in what your world is all about. And the last thing I'll share, the little extra, is someone who has charm. A guy who has an edge, a guy who is confident, a guy who has charm, is subconsciously considered more high value because there's something to be said about the way you feel when you're in contact with a guy who's interested, who's present, and who has the, an ability to either make you laugh or make you feel more relaxed. Now, let's talk about the big problem and the elephant in the room. And that is, in today's day and age, not all values in high value men are weighted equally. In the balance of things, there's three things that are weighted more heavily than not. The first one is financial. And there's a few different levels. You have financial stability, the base minimum that a guy needs to be at to be considered really high value in most women's standards. The next one would be financial comfort. The next one would be financial wealth. And the next one, financial ultra wealth. The higher up the ladder you go, the more high value society tends to consider you as. The next one is power. If you have influence, if you can command the presence and people tend to do what you say and you tend to lead, then you tend to be considered more high value. And the third one is status. And if you doubt this, then think about movie stars who, or even reality TV stars who may not bring all sorts of emotional connection and intelligence, but the higher the status, the higher the high value in the guy, unfortunately. Now, I'm not saying that it's your definition, but I'm saying I want you today, as a result of watching this video, to really get a gauge into what your definition of high value is and how much you're weighing things one way or the other. Now, I'm gonna share today three different groupings of high value men, some that I would not consider you to go for and one that I would consider you to go for. But before I do that, I wanna share what all high value men want. There's three things that all high value heterosexual guys who want to marry a woman are looking for. The first thing they wanna do is they want to feel seen. At the most basic level, you wanna feel seen by your partner, you wanna be validated by your partner, and if you're really honest, you wanna be admired by your partner. That's something, whether you're on the toxic end of the spectrum or you're on the altruistic end of the spectrum, you want to be admired by the woman you're with. And guys who don't feel admired end up ending relationships. 
call it our insecurity, call it whatever you want, but that's just the truth of how things work. Even the most conscious of guys want to feel that sense of my woman admires me. The next one is aliveness. All guys, regardless of how awesome or unawesome they are, want to feel alive. And one of the most powerful ways to feel aliveness is through the conscious connection with a woman. When you connect with someone who has an emotional connection with you, has a physical connection with you, has a spiritual connection with you, well, you get to feel more alive. Life feels more present. You feel different than you can feel on your own. And the last one is sexual expression. Whether you're conscious or unconscious, you want to express yourself sexually in a union, in a way that you don't express yourself with other types of friendships. I hate generalizations and stereotyping, but sometimes grouping categories of humans is important because you can see patterns that can take different actions. So for today's purposes, I've created three groups of high value men that women tend to go for, and I'm gonna share what each one of these groups goes for in marriage, so you can define if this is something you're looking for or not. The first one is going to be the selfish high value man. You might be thinking, Bern, you've lost me by now. How can you have selfish and high value in the same definition? Well, because not all high value men are created equal, and part of what I wanna get across right now is that some of the values that we consider high value are not necessarily high value in my book. So a selfish high value man is somebody who might be a high achiever, somebody who's kicking ass and taking names, somebody who has a great presence, he might be physically strong, he might be someone that other men fear. On the lower end of the spectrum, he's a selfish guy who's looking to get his needs met, exclusively, mostly, and on the higher end of the spectrum, you're looking at a narcissist who's abusive and the worst type of guy you can connect with. The things that this type of guy is going for is number one, status. As a result of connecting with you, he looks better in his world, he looks better among his peers. So these types of guys tend to go strongly for physical characteristics, for the status of the woman, and don't necessarily have emotional connection as a strong need. The next thing they're going for, release. When he connects with you sexually, when you go out and have a drink, when you spend time together, he wants to release, he wants to feel that sense of aliveness through his own needs mostly. He's not necessarily asking for what you want, he's thinking about what he needs, what he wants, and he's, you are gonna be a vehicle to meet his needs. And the last one is control. On the, he's a selfish guy type of experience, you're going to feel a lot of pain, on the narcissistic side, this is going to veer into emotional abuse, even physical abuse. So again, not necessarily what you hope to hear when you talk about high value, but go to a Fortune magazine and seek the names of CEOs. Many guys, I'm not saying all, because there's some conscious guys in the mix, but many of them highly selfish, if not narcissistic, and have droves of women throwing themselves at their feet because they think that these are high value men because of what they're doing in, in the world without really noticing that the relationships, and you can actually verify through the X, Y's of these dudes, have been horrific. The next one is gonna be a workaholic high value man. Now, you might say, well, the narcissist might also be a workaholic, yes, but the reason I'm dividing this in its own separate category is because this could be a guy who's genuine, who is not necessarily selfish, he, he believes in sacrifice, and he's working a lot, but he's not just doing it for himself, he wants to be generous with someone, he might be emotionally intelligent, when you do spend time with him, and it's not that much time, because he works so hard, you do experience a sense of fullness and aliveness, it's never enough, because his first marriage is gonna be to his work. Now, you might say, well, why would somebody do this? Why would somebody be so intelligent, charming, uh, emotionally connected, but focus so much on work at the detriment of balance. Because just like, unfortunately, women have been valued traditionally in a shitty way because of their physical appearance and their age, men have been valued through what they create, the output they create, the income they generate. So it's very, very hard for most men, and I include myself in this category, by the way, to fully separate worth from what you do as a living. And if you're unconscious about it, then the only source of worth that you have. If you lose your work, if you lose your income, you're nothing, you're no one. So many of these men, it's not that they're in love with their work, even though they might really enjoy it, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, but they're trying to fill a void that is unfeelable through work. 
So as much as these guys want to create a life with you and they are checklist by Cosmo Magazine high value, the workaholic high value man is going for two things in marriage. Number one is support, emotional support and logistical support. Logistical support because he's the type of guy where the division of labor might be very, very clear. I'm gonna go work, you stay with the kids metaphorically speaking. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but if you're not looking for that and he's a workaholic and you have children together, that might be what's going on. Or if you don't have children together, he's the type of guy who's going to say good morning and see you tonight. He's not going to go to the doctor with you. He's not going to call you or text you many times throughout the day. He's not going to necessarily be there in times of your emotional need if they're more than morning and night because he's going for his first love, which is work. So these guys are going for support, and they're going for variety. Why? Because work is so dense and so heavy that when they connect with you, they, they want to feel a sense of fun and joy, not necessarily the type of guy who finishes work and wants to have a deep conversation around your dreams. He's spent out, he's tapped out, and he wants variety and fun. The relationship will not be fulfilling for the most part if there's no balance in the equation of work versus life. Now, before I go into my third and only type of high value man that I would suggest you seek a relationship with, if you're a single woman watching this and you've been at this for a while and you haven't figured out what's going on, I've created a quiz after 12 years of helping women find love in all sorts of challenges and made it into a simple quiz you can take in about 60 seconds that will reveal to you the number one reason you're still single. Not the symptom, but the root cause. If you want to participate, all you have to do is go to the first link in the description of this video. You'll find a link that looks like this answer a few simple questions. In the next few seconds, you have two things. The answer to the question, why you're still single, and a report that will show you based on your own specific blind spot, what's the number one thing you can do starting today to reverse this trend and attract the guy you want in a fraction of the time. Now, the third type of guy and the only guy I'd recommend having a relationship with is a conscious high value man. And uh, this type of guy is going to have some of the qualities the other guys are going for, but tilted towards the emotional connection, towards empathy, towards kindness, towards purpose of the beneficial side versus purpose in the selfish kind. This type of guy is going to want to marry for first and foremost to contribute. Now, we all want to give and take in relationships. That's human nature. That's the truth. Whether you enter a relationship primarily to give or primarily to take matters. The selfish guy is there primarily to take. The conscious guy is there primarily to give, even though he wants to receive. He wants emotional connection, he wants depth, and overall, he knows that his life will be different, slash better, more expressed, more connected, less selfish as a result of being with a conscious woman. So in his heart of hearts, he wants to be a better human and bring something better to the world as a result of the connection that he's creating with you. Now, my goal is not for you to adopt my definition of high value man, but for you to stop, take a deep breath, and highly consider if your conscious definition of high value man is matched by what you're really going for in the world. And that you might be open to kindness, empathy, generosity, and openness as values. You might want to put more tilt and more weight than power and finances and status. Hope this is helpful and useful. If it is, it would mean the world to me and to my channel if you click like and subscribe. If you enjoy this video, share it with someone who might benefit from it. And if you want to continue learning how to attract the guy you want without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, games, or stupid techniques, make sure to go to the next video right here.